Hey, yeah, I think when you're in a game of this magnitude, even I think we were up to 20 maybe at one point, or 19, it's not, you, you're always thinking of, <laughs> as bad as it sounds, you're, you're thinking of how can we get this thing to the finish line, even though it's 19. And um, to Amesbury's credit, um, every time we got that 15, 17, 19 point lead, it seemed like they'd score seven or eight straight. Um, that O'Connor group. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's what you're going to get. They're not here uh, on a fluke. They've won 18 basketball games, and they got some good players. She's a player of the year in their league, a good league. Um, and we knew they were going to keep coming back. Now, at the same time, you know, two of our key players from the other night and from the whole season, we don't have towards the end. So, I, again, talked about it against Fenwick, the stories of resiliency. You know, I, I said at the end, you know, get, get the ball to Van. And then I said, I can't believe I'm saying this. In the North Final. Um, she's a great kid. She's worked hard. She's only a sophomore. She's played two or three quarters of JVs all year. Um, so, you know, She's usually very good with the ball, like you can't simulate North Final four minutes to go being double teamed. So she hit the big three. After I just said in the timeout, let's kill some clock and they take not <laughs> shot, but they've been doing the opposite of what I've been saying all year. That's why we're still alive. <laughs> yeah. Coach, it was a little shaky at the end, yep. right? You know? I think, you know, every year we I mean, it's not like not, we're not Duke here, but the years that we've been here. It's always a struggle. It's been a struggle at the end. I mean, they went through in 2014 with maybe our best team. I think that was a one or two point game at the end. We were up 10 with a minute and a half to go. Um, Stoneham was close for a while. We put, listen, the other team wants to go to the Garden as well. Now they're down 10 and there's only two minutes. So now they're in desperation mode. They're running two or three at the ball. And listen, let's face it, they, they're human beings. We, they're just trying to they're looking at the clock saying, can that just get to zero, zero, zero? And it's not going to unless you keep playing because they don't want to lose. Um, you know, we, we have a saying, uh, Mr. Ridley, who was our principal, is, you know, when, when teams lose at our school, he always says, I didn't know if you guys knew this or not, but the other team wanted to win. You know, so you can't just sit back and say, oh, we'll hold the ball for 30 seconds and then give it back to you and kill clock. So I think it was a combination of us maybe limping to the finish line with um, some different players on the floor and them in desperation mode, trying to win. Yeah. How about the play of Pam and Metello was hitting a threes tonight? Um, you know, we lost three in a row um, a couple weeks ago. We went to Nosset, that took about 10 hours. We could have been in San Diego. Um, we played Cathedral, we were up in the third quarter, and then we lost to Fenwick, which that film won't be going to the Hall of Fame anytime soon for review. Since that time, we've had a renewed sense of energy and it started with her. Um, but as I said earlier, she's a great kid first and foremost. I mean, this is a kid that had scholarship opportunities and passed them up because she wants to be a nurse. So she's probably gonna end up at a nursing school and play Division Three basketball when she could have went to a scholarship program and not paid for college tuition. I think that speaks volumes. Mattella, on the other hand, um, she's, um, She's an interesting character, we'll put it at that. Before the game, you know, the three-point line, the high school line was in front of the college line. We could, you could see it a little bit, but it wasn't... I was watching Olivia, and she was shooting from behind the college line. I, I thought she she looked good shooting. So I didn't tell her that it was the wrong one. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, I just, you know, it's, it's you don't want to put anything in their mind to make them think even more. So I would say most of her threes were from behind the college line, and I'll go in and tell her now that she's ready for college, even though she has to stay for another year. Can you talk a little bit, talk about Pam just having the composure to step up when, uh, after Gabby went out, you know? I, I would say, in general, she's one of the best kids I've ever come across. If anything, I wish there was like injections of urgency from time to time. Because she is by nature a little bit laid back, sometimes too nice, um, you know, almost like, oh, it's okay, you know, I'll let, I'll let Van try to beat the double team, you know, I don't want to go take the ball from her, no, she go get the ball and get everybody else out of the way. Um, and when she did that, with a minute and 20 to go, three straight possessions, we had her take the ball up, right? We got four foul shots, three for four, and we got a hoop from Janice in transition, so I guess the coach probably should have done that a little earlier. Speaking of, she's kind of dark or something. Yes, her she's defense come, was tremendous. She's come on. She's only a junior. She's um, you know, this is the first. She's this is her first year of playing like real basketball every single day. She started last year in the summer in AU. 
Um, you know, last year she backed up Olivia. Um, and Olivia was a workhorse. She didn't really come, Olivia and there. She didn't really come out of the game. Janice didn't play a ton. Went to work in the summer. Got a lot better, and she's playing 27, 28 minutes a game. She had a little lull around the 66% marker, and has found her energy again. So um, again tonight, without her, I don't. I know she had maybe double digits, but she was definitely double digits in rebounds as well. I was going to say, and just.